In previous videos, I've done Fender Stratocaster and Telecaster shootouts covering the years from 1950 to modern day, so do check those out if that interests you. And in this first video that I'm going to be doing, I'm taking a custom shop Fender Stratocaster and Telecaster, uh, both modern day builds 2022 that hark back to the 1950s era. How different are they? And which one would you choose, if any? Or would you, like me, uh, need to have both? After all, they are just great, iconic guitars of the days gone by. <laughs> My name's Stu, please do check out the rest of my channel as it covers my return back to playing and recording guitar after a 40 year break. And again, once again, many thanks to those who take the time to subscribe, comment and get in touch. It does help the channel and it's always appreciated. So coming up, number one, the guitars and a very quick description of each model. Number two, what they sound like in direct comparison to each other. Number three, points of interest. Number four, my likes and dislikes. And number five, conclusion, final remarks. So, without further ado, a very brief explanation of these two models. So number one, starting with the Fender Custom Shop limited run 1950s Stratocaster Relic in a chocolate two-tone wide fade sunburst over an older body. It's actually based on a 1956 model and it's been given the body contours of the 1957 model. Now the pickups are hand-wound Fat 50s while the selector switch is the five-way blade type which was introduced in the late 1970s. The tremolo block is of a vintage style. Now the single ply pickguard is from the later 1960 design with 11 screw fixings. The neck is pretty chunky to the feel and is modelled on a 1954 soft V and the fretboard is maple rift sawn with 21 jumbo 6100 frets. Now it sports a bone nut and the tuning keys are of the vintage style. The case it comes in, manufactured by the American case company G&G, the outer covering in this example is a cream coloured textured vinyl with leather stitching and uh, binding at the ends. Now next up, the Fender Custom Shop 1952 Telecaster No Caster Blonde Blackguard model. This being built in late 2022. Now this is an ash body finished in an aged nitrocellulose lacquer, typical of the no-caster period, and this example is from the Relic series. A maple riff saw neck, 21 narrow tall 6105 frets, and with a 57 soft V-neck shape. The fingerboard has a compound radius starting at 7.25 at the headstock and tapering to 9.5 towards the body. It sports a 51 style no caster single ply relic pit guard with the early five screw arrangement. Vintage Telecaster bridge setup with its three barrel brass saddles. The pickups are hand wound original Blackguard 5152 single coils in combination with a modified no caster wiring setup. Now the three-way selector toggle is of the early barrel design and the knurled control knobs have rounded tops. Truss rod adjustment, just like the Stratocaster, is at the body end of the neck. Now the case it comes in is manufactured, again by the American case company G&G, &G, and the outer covering in this example, a tweed finish with leather stitched binding at the ends. So number two, how do they compare in regard to tone? Now I'm going to be playing through the Bad Cat Black Cat amplifier 
And a quick note again regarding this amplifier, it does need to be dialed in to best suit the pickups in use. So I'm going to set the amplifier to a general middle of the tone sound uh, just to give a flavour of what differences there are between these two guitars. Now I'll play some chords clean with some reverb uh, across the different selector positions in a quick side-by-side -side comparison. So beginning with neck pickup, position one. Position 2, which is position 3 on the Stratocaster. Here is position 2 that out-of-phase position on the Stratocaster. Bridge position 3, which is position 5 on the Stratocaster. Here is that position four, the out of phase position on the Stratocaster. And now adjusting the amplifier controls for a moderate overdrive tone with reverb, I'll demonstrate the pickup uh, reaction when I strum, pick the strings with restraint, and then when they're they're played more forcibly. So neck pickup, position one. Middle position two, which is position three on the Stratocaster. Here is position two, that out of phase position on the Stratocaster. Bridge position three, which is position five on the Stratocaster. And here is that position four, the out of phase position on the Stratocaster. Now keeping the controls the same, I'll demonstrate with the addition of a TC Spark Boost pedal. So again, here we have the neck pickup position one. Position two, which is position three on the Stratocaster. Here is position two, that out of phase position on the Stratocaster. 
Bridge position three, which is position five on the Stratocaster. And here is that position four, the out of phase position on the Stratocaster. <laughs> So number three, things I'd personally mention that might be of interest. So two Fender guitars representing the 1950s. Both are very enjoyable to play, but very um, different from each other. And again, it all depends on what you're playing through, how you dial in that tone and the style of music you're playing. Now, of course, the Stratocaster not only has a tremolo, but the ability to select five tonal positions with positions two and four, giving those iconic glassy tones. Now, they do feel different in your hands. The Stratocaster's Jumbo 6100 frets are noticeably different under the fingers compared to the Telecaster's narrow tall 6105 frets. Regarding tonal response, yes, they are very uh, different, but still feel as though they are cut from the same cloth, so to speak. Both guitars need to be dialed in to best suit the pickups and to get the best tones out of them. So number four, likes and dislikes. What do I like? Well, I really like both of these guitars. They just have so much character. Um, they are very different, as I say, from each other in a positive way. I think for me personally, I need to work a little harder to get certain tones and nuances out of these 1950s style uh, instruments. Um, that's not to say that's a bad thing. I think it's just part of their charm. So I would say um, they won't be for everyone. But from my perspective, well, I just love to jam with them. They demand that you, you get to grips with their person uh, personalities, so to speak. So, what do I dislike? I should say I prefer my setups on my strats to have a floating tremolo, the most challenging setup when it comes to tuning stability. When it comes to doing a lot of extreme bends or heavy tremolo use, that's where you find the Stratocaster can suffer, uh, suffer tuning problems and I find myself keeping an eye or an ear out for that. They are both custom shop and the build quality is very good, but they are 1950s style guitars, albeit with certain modifications, and they are what they are. So there are idiosyncrasies that tend to go with that territory. Once again, I love playing them. Um, they're not my first choice for studio work, but I definitely love jamming with them. And of course, the Telecaster, minus a tremolo unit, uh, it, it's very stable when it comes to tuning. It's in the next video when we go to the 1960s guitars that I feel there is a definite change. Hit the bell to get notified for that particular video. So number five, conclusion, final thoughts. Well, my conclusion, they are both enjoyable guitars and anyone with an interest in that 1950s era that you don't want to spend huge uh, sums of money on vintage gear, then Fender has done a really nice job with these particular models. As always, no one has paid me to mention any of the products that you see here. These are just my opinions. Now, if you have a love for Telecasters and Stratocasters, there are some really good books out there I found a couple of these books helpful when looking to learn about specific models. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Next week, we take a look at the 60s models. Do think about subscribing, hit the bell to get notifications, like and share. As always, it really helps the channel. And do check out my channel playlists, which cover my journey back to playing and recording guitar after 
that 40 year break. So whether you're a newcomer, an ongoing player, or like me, an old hand returning to guitar playing, I always take the time to engage with folks who take time to comment. So until next time, the journey continues. Do take care. <laughs>